I'm Tom Sadler. I'm a communications consultant here in the Shenandoah Valley and been involved with um, fishing and fly fishing specifically for you know, almost all of my life, you know, so 50 years. I'm on the board of the American Fly Fishing Trade Association. I'm on the steering committee for the Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture and um, been involved in conservation as a advocate for most of my professional career and doing um, things to um, protect and restore native fish populations across the country, but have been, been very focused on brook trout and um, semi-retired a few years back and uh, moved down here and, and became a fishing guide again and um, been focused on brook trout. <music> Our clientele is, you know, um, from the D.C. metro area, from the Roanoke area, from the Richmond area, and it's people, by and large, who have uh, some experience in fly fishing. I specialize in a in a Japanese style of fly fishing called Tenkara, which has become um, quite the rage in the last year or so. It's a fixed line type of fishing and it it's it excels for mountain brook trout fishing so we've been able to capitalize on a technique of fly fishing that's very suitable for the habitat that the brook trout are in so beginner fly fishermen who learn with a 10 car rod, find it an easier way to learn fly fishing and, and the experienced fly fishermen who want to get up into the mountains and catch the, the, uh, the native brook trout are finding this technique to be very, very effective and they're finding that they're catching more fish but more importantly they're catching bigger fish which with brook trout and and it, it's you know a big fish is you know nine to ten inches, but it's on a on a on a very bendy ten ten car rod. It's a it's a pretty good thrill. People come to destinations to fish for two reasons: one, for the location, so. If they were to go out west, they're going to the to the big rivers, the Madison, you know, the the Gallatin, you know, the Ruby or the with the Missouri. They go targeting specific fish, so they might be go targeting brook. I mean, uh, brown trout or rainbow trout. We have the same kind of thing. We don't have big rivers, but what we have are these huge tracts of of public land that have become strongholds for brook trout and people come to now they're targeting brook trout they're coming to catch these iconic beautiful fish and they can't do it everywhere and they want to do it in the, its native habitat sure you can catch brook trout out west but that's it's not the native fish here you're coming to catch native fish in its native habitat Well, brook trout are the native fish, and it's uh, the native brook trout, or the native trout species for Virginia. We also have rainbow trout and brown trout, but they're, they're considered exotic species for Virginia. So it is the native fish. And if you look up and down the Appalachian Range, uh, we've lost the majority, uh, you know, well over half of our native trout waters over the last hundred years. Uh, but if you look at Virginia, Virginia has kind of a little island of, of good brook trout fishing at Chando Park and some of the uh, national forests here. Brook trout right now is fairly stable but there are a number of threats. One's acid rain which uh, seems to be improving but but is still a threat. Uh, the other is global warming. They're probably the two major threats um, because most of our brook trout's on federal land right now. We do have a large area in the south, southern part of the state on the Blue Ridge Plateau that's in private ownership, and we have had some 
decreasing populations there because of development of land and that type of thing. But that's the only area that really is impacted by private development of land. We're probably the second highest concentration of, of sulfur dioxide which causes acid rain in the country. It's right along this spine of the Blue Ridge. So um, the reason it's improving is because they, the amendments to the Clean Air Act a couple years ago uh, required improvements at some of these uh, power plants. Most of the, most of the coal burning is at power plants. So um, we're surprised that we're already seeing some improvement in water quality. So that's kind of encouraging. Here in the valley, we have two types of, of uh, water ecosystems, if you will. We've got our mountain streams, our freestone mountain streams, and then in the valley floor, we've got spring creeks that are, you know, the valley's just riddled with spring creeks. Now, the, historically, there were brook trout in those spring creeks, but what's happened is agriculture's come in, those fish have been pushed out and back into their strongholds in the headwaters, which is where something like the Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture is working to, to protect those areas. The spring creeks now, where we're restoring them, we're, we're using them for recreational purposes, putting um, browns or rainbows in there to um, create a recreational opportunity which drives the economic activity for fly shops like this one. And by a successful industry, a successful fly fishing industry, we're able to donate money or in, in fact the fly fishing industry, fishing and hunting, are the only two industries in this country that are taxed for conservation purposes. They voluntarily did an excise tax on rods, reels, lines, and and then the whole hunting, the guns and ammunition are all tax and excise tax. That money goes into the wildlife and sport fish restoration account, which then sends money to the states to do conservation work or access work. So having a recreational fishery in the area drives those, creates that recreational opportunity, which then creates that economic activity that fosters that conservation. So it's a, it's a closed loop system in a lot of ways. The people that fish for, for smallmouth bass on the Shenandoah River are actually helping the brook trout. Whether they know it or not, they are because the manufacturers of Tenkara rods or Sage rods or Orvis rods or Scott fly rods Winston rods are all donating into or are or, or taxed and giving money into this conservation, into the sport fish restoration account, which then sends that money out to programs that, for example, here in the value, Valley, the Mass and Nut and Trout Unlimited chapter might be using for restoration work up in, uh, on the national forest to, for brook trout habitat. I'm very protective of our spring creeks and our spring creek fisheries because that's driving that economic activity that then allows us to do the conservation work for the brook trout. Being a refugee from Washington, and Washington, I've been there for 30 years, worked there for 30 years. I mean, it is a toxic environment that is just numbing and I don't think anyone who's there now believes that it's a healthy place to work that it's that it's anything other than just a, a, a crushing place to work so having these these venues that you can come out to close by I mean you think we're, we're two hours from downtown DC but even 30 minutes from downtown DC you've got all these wonderful public lands that offer that that escape from the confrontational political toxicity that is become Washington DC and I don't mean to be cynical about it uh, but you know my experience has been that and I'm sure there are people that are still that still enjoy it but I think they will find that they're going to be very thankful like Roosevelt was like Hoover was like many other presidents to have a retreat somewhere and they usually aren't in downtown DC. Those retreats are out in the mountains, 
uh, someplace where they're going to find that renewal. And, and that renewal is there because people have been willing to give their time and money to protect these places. You know, some people are very pessimistic about the long range um, view of trout. I'm, I'm usually an optimist. I think there's a, I think that we have pretty good potential to hold on to, to a fairly decent trout population here, despite the threats we have right now. And I think if um, the public and fishermen kind of unite at, at protecting this species, it, it'll be around for a long time.